good afternoon, good evening, Jean Dobre, Dobre Vichor. Uh, this is Johnny here, Northern Irishman in Poland, Ponocno Irlandshik of the Post, sir. Um, this week, isolation questionnaire. Um, it's my, I, I don't know if it's eighth or ninth week at home staying in, um, but certainly it's been a couple of months. Uh, uh, so I've asked for just something different on the blog this week. You can ask me questions about life in Poland uh, as an immigrant, as a foreigner, which um, might be interesting to some people thinking of doing the same or some people wondering you know, why nationalistic people can still move about and love the, their new um, location. So uh, this is the second part. So I did the first part. Um, I've answered some questions. Let's go through with these. So I'm just going by the Facebook um, questions in order. Okay, from Danana. Now, I don't know if these are real names, but these are what's used on, on Facebook. So Danana has actually asked me four questions, at least. So let's do Danana first. Um, worst flight. Um, this was actually... Uh, yeah, I've had loads of bad flights. I don't really like flying. Um, I had a really bad flight from um, Bournemouth to Dublin one time. It was just rocking on the way into Dublin. I thought it was going to crash. It was a really scary experience. And everyone was sort of hugging each other on the plane. Uh, I don't like flying. Um, try to avoid. I really want to try and avoid it in the future if I can, especially now with the virus. But quite a few bad flights. Um, next question: packing essentials. Um, Packing essentials. I've already done this before on a blog post, um, on a photo and a video. Um, I just do the top five that I take. Um, a football shirt, always a good talking point in a bar, and um, lets me support my teams when I'm away. It gives me that kind of sense of pride. And um, passport, uh, can't travel far without it. And uh, water, you always need water, so at least just have one bottle um, with you at every time. Um, for me, it's a camera or an, and, a, and a laptop as well because I'm a blogger so I need to be writing about it I need to have photos to show people where I've been and I, I want to take photos for myself of course as well so that I can look back on them and remember and I take photos of things that people don't take photos of normally like I'll take photos of receipts in a, a bill in a bar and that'll be because it saves me time writing it down so if I need to blog about that and remember the price uh, I have it on a photo um, I don't need to, you know, check bank accounts or, especially if you're paying in cash, you know, you just, uh, it's it's a good idea. So definitely a camera and, and have it full, uh, have it with a, a um, high storage memory so you can keep taking photos and, and making videos. Um, how do you budget these trips is the next question from Danina. Um, I'm a good budgeter actually. Um, I cut out luxuries. Um, and I'm very, very um, detailed with um, saving money in such trips. Like, it could be just I'll walk somewhere instead of ever taking public transport um, or, uh, or taxis. Taxis are my pet hate. I hate taxis. I try and avoid them if I can. Um, booking tours, expensive tours, is also something I don't do. I don't really like doing that. I've done it before, of course, but I try to avoid it. Um, Happy hour in bars, looking out for promotions for food, um, free days in a museum, if a museum has one day a week where it's free, do the museum on that day, fly on a Tuesday, Tuesdays are always cheaper, um, other budget trips, uh, ways to budget, I'm just um, good at maximising the money that I have and not, not wasting it, um, to me I, I waste it on uh, football, travel and alcohol. Um, that that's that's my wasting. Um, okay, next one. Best comfortable airline and worst airline. Uh, best airline for me is Ryanair. Absolutely my favourite. Um, I've travelled all over Europe on a budget with them. Uh, I like them. I've never had a problem with them. I like their honesty and their business ethic and the fact that you know it's just a yellow and blue seat. You know, who needs comfort and luxury on an airline? Certainly not me. I want to get from A to B safely and cheaply that's what I want I don't care if it's a bit dirty or you know something like that on board I, I don't even care um, about the color scheme or 
you know, how comfortable the chair is. Now, this is me, of course. Some people like the luxury, and they'll be unhappy with that. But So for me, Ryanair, worst airline. I've got five really ones that I hate. Um, I really don't like um, Air Algeri, uh, Air Tunis. They both lost my bags. Brussels Airlines lost my bag. Cathay Pacific lost my bag. Um, Aerolinius Argentinos not only did they lose my bag, but they cancelled a flight on me for $200 once. Um, and there's another one, uh, Taka. Taka from Chile to Ecuador. I was flying, I hate them. So, yeah, those are the ones to avoid. Uh, I'm also not best happy with Turkish Airlines because they also lost my bag one, one time. But they made up for it by giving me a five-star hotel. Um, so I have to say, out of the bad ones, Turkish Airlines won me back and I would travel with them again. Um, there we go. Okay, the next question on there is from Nate Stein or Natty Stein. I don't know how to pronounce these. It says, if I'm visiting Poland for the first time, which cities would you recommend me visiting? I do like going off the beaten path. Um, well, if you're going off the beaten path, please avoid Warsaw, Krakow, um, Gdańsk, Poznan and Wrocław, because those are the top five beaten paths. So let's have, let's not mention any of those, because they're obvious. Um, so in the north, I would go to Gdynia instead of Gdańsk, which is only about half an hour on a train from Gdańsk. So Gdynia, beautiful seafront, lots of nice bars, very Polish, bit of war history. And it was a village, of course, that, that, that grew up from nothing in the 1920s to you know a metropolis that's sprawling. Um, so also in the north, I do like the north, Mienges Groja, um, which is on the, the Baltic coast. It's a beautiful sea side resort in the summer. So I would do those two, and then I would delve deeper into the countryside and go to Starogard, Starogard Gdanski, which is just a very typical textbook Polish city, which I actually thought the first time I went that I wouldn't like it. I thought it would be a bit drab and boring but there was so much there was so much energy in that place that um, it drew me back a few times it's got a nice square it's got very famous football history with um, Kazakh Dana being from there um, and it's it's just a nice city off the beaten track and there's plenty of places um, to eat and go out drinking there as well another place similar um, is Malbork but Malbork uh, and Starogard the difference is Malbork's a lot more touristic um, other off the beaten track places, um, yeah, Kenshin, which is a, another, it's not an old town, it's quite a modern city, but it's just, there's something about Kenshin that I liked, um, so you go to Olsztyn by train and then you can get another train or bus to Kenshin, um, the, the sad story with Kenshin is it's very near to Hitler's bunker where he stayed during um, World War II, and attempted assassination of Adolf Hitler. So that's really interesting for the war history um, to go there. Um, not as perhaps uh, happy a place to be as the others. Um, and I'll give you another off the beaten track place that I like in, in another part of Poland is Świdnica, which has got beautiful churches and also a lovely old town similar to Starogard. It's a beautiful square with a um, well looked after building, very friendly and open people and also also what I like about those places, um, Kenshin, Svidnitsa, Gdynia and Starogard is that you will probably be one of the few foreigners in the bars and cafes when you go in so people are actually interested to speak to you it, it makes you like, you're the exotic one um, and I love that, that's, that's one of the things that I fell in love with in in those parts of Poland because some countries if you go into a place like that they ignore you and, and sort of don't want you there. I find the total opposite in those places. Um, okay so that will conclude the part um, two of this. I'll answer the rest of the, the questions in part three because this is this is quite a, uh, a long list of, of questions here.